Hello! It's been absolutely ages since I've done another video, but I thought um, I did a little bit of a different video so far. My videos have sort of been more of me taking pictures and then showing the results at the end. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk you through um, some parts of my image processing in PixInsight. Um, and what I will do is I will also put a link in the description uh, that will bring you to a file uh, that you can download um, and you can tag along um, to this video and try and process my data or you can also use this uh, with some of your own data uh, that you have because the steps are pretty much pretty much the same so uh, let's dive in um, I for this one, what we're going to be doing is um, I took an image of the Flaming Star and Tadpole uh, Nebula um, with uh, the Red Cat 51 and 2600 MC, uh, and I believe I used the Optolon L Extreme filter for that. Um, this was also first light with uh, the red cat, so there's there's a little bit of tilt that um, I subsequently uh, fixed um, since taking this image, but it's not too uh, not too bad. Um, so what we do is I've uploaded the the image into here, and like I said, you can you can stop this video anytime. Um, I'm take it most of most of the people watching this are going to be familiar with with a lot of these steps and if not um, like I said pause it um, to sort of work through the process itself um, so first we're gonna stretch the image see what we're working with um, so this kind of green cast is quite normal um, when you stretch the image what I tend to do is run automatic background extraction. Um, I have all of my sort of processes uh, saved on the side here so I don't have to go and look for them but um, as you'll know they be in process all processes and you can find everything in here it's alphabetically ordered um, so very easy to find. Um, so yeah we just want to get rid of that green cast here. Um, open automatic background extraction I select subtract in the target image correction and I tend to always or most of the time get rid of the background uh, because we don't need that so we're just going to get rid of the green cast on here see what we're working with then you have to stretch the image again and close the old one because we don't need that anymore it's just clutter on on here um, what I tend to do then, the gradients aren't too bad in this image. I think it was a uh, shot when there wasn't any moon around and I have fairly good skies. I live in Portal 4. Um, so what I usually do is then run this again with automatic background extraction. Uh, but this time I select normalize. Uh, again, I'll get rid of rid of this in the background and just drop the triangle onto the image. And we stretch the image again. So that got rid of a little bit more on here. Right, move this up here. Next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna work on some of the color corrections and the background neutralization. Um, so the right way of doing this uh, would be to select an area in here uh, that is relatively stark, ide uh, dark, so ideally you don't want to have any any stars around, but for the sake of this tutorial I'm... Um, so what we will do, as I said, uh, you can do this with previews, but for the sake of this tutorial, what we will do is just drag the triangle of background neutralization on here and then do the same with color calibration. And let that run through. That's great. Okay. So 
the next step you can do in various different ways. Obviously, Pix Inside has its own sort of free um, noise reduction tools. Um, so you could use a script that you can download for free in the Easy Processing Suite, which is called Easy Denoise, and run that over the image. Um, I find this is I don't know if there's a right or wrong time to do noise reduction, but usually after I do um, some form of color calibration, I then, before I stretch the image completely, so at the moment if I switch the screen transfer function off, this is the image that we have. Um, so we need to in the next step, um, stretch that image properly. Um, so noise reduction, like I said, you could do easy denoise. This takes quite a while, depending on how powerful your uh, laptop or Mac or PC or whatever you're working with is. Um, I will be using something that I paid for and that is really worth every penny. It's called... Um, noise exterminator and that really runs through extremely quickly and does an incredible job. Um, if you happen to use that I tend to set my images for the first set of noise reduction to around 70. Um, that gives fairly decent results. Drag the triangle over the top um, and that takes a few seconds to run. It's very quick if I run easy denoise on my old machine, that sometimes took 45 minutes an hour. Um, so yeah. Almost done. So there we are, we'll close that, just to show you the difference, this is after, this is before, I don't know how this comes across on YouTube, but quite a remarkable difference. Okay, um, noise reduction is done for this step, uh, the next thing that we will do is we will stretch the image, and the way to do this, uh, you're probably also familiar with that, uh, is you have a triangle here on the screen transfer function, you open the histogram transformation, you take that triangle and drag it onto the bar at the bottom here. And then you drag the triangle from the histogram onto the image. That will essentially double stretch it, so we're just going to reset here, bottom right corner, on histogram and on the screen transfer function, and that gives us the stretched image. Next thing that we will do, I can also see a small green cast uh, on here, and the best way to get rid of that is uh, SCNR. Now, if you use this, a lot of people leave the amount at 100%. Um, if I drag this on here, and do that, the background turns very purple, and I don't like that. And then you have to do a lot in the histogram to sort of get that back to the right way. So what I tend to do is I set the amount to around 40. Between 40 and 50 is okay. Uh, I tend to use 40. Drop that on here, and that gives a much more subtle, natural, uh, effect and doesn't change the colors too much. Okay, uh, next step. This is very optional, but I think it makes a huge difference. Um, and I wanted to show this um, because it's a very simple, simple process. And if you, depending on what level uh, you're at with picks inside, but at some point you will come across the convolution, and this can be an absolute rabbit hole. Uh, that it can take you down and I have seen this on another YouTube clip and if I can find it I will post it in the link below but it's a super straightforward uh, way of dealing with this. Um, so the way we're going to do it 
firstly I'm gonna quickly rename this because the image identifier is way too long so I'm gonna rename it to main it's the main image we're working with um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a clone because essentially we need to create a star mask to do that you drag that main icon there just anywhere on the screen and you create a clone image next thing that we do with that clone image is we can process all processes and then HDR multi-scale transform and this depends on your focal length that you're using but generally for for wide fields or anything up to five six hundred millimeter focal length uh, works perfectly fine um, so what we do is with the layers we set those to three and with the iterations we set those to three as well and then we're just going to drag the triangle onto that cloned image really don't worry what happens with the nebula on here um, because essentially we are just worried about the stars um, so this will dim this out so we can close that um, and then we're going to create a star mask that's also in process all processes and then star mask this brings up this video uh, this 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 um, pop up here um, we set the threshold to 0.2 large scale to zero small scale also to zero the smoothness to 12 binarize that's it and then we drag the triangle over onto that image and this will become very natural this could can be a little bit intimidating but it's after doing this a few times um, it's very very simple we can close the star mask um, program and the next thing we're gonna do is open the histogram transformation and then we're gonna select make sure this image is selected selected in the drop down here the star mask and then we drag the white balance uh, let's put a preview on here on that circle you can put a preview on so drag the white so all the the right the slide on the right hand side over a little bit just to bring the stars to the foreground a little bit more that's it that's enough and then hit apply reset this we'll do that cloned image that we used we can get rid of that we don't need that anymore because we now have our stars and we move this to the side and bring our main image to the foreground again the next thing we do is we want to create a luminance mask and that's very simple to do make sure you select your image that you want to work with and hit that button here if you hover over it it says L component so we're gonna extract that which is what we're gonna do now essentially gives us another image and that's the luminance image and we take that here where it says main underscore L and drag it onto the slider underneath where it says main on the main image so now we created the luminance mask I don't actually want to see the mask, so right click on the image and hit show mask. That will we can still see here it's marked orange. We have the mask is live, it's on here. And then what we want to do before we start the convolution is I'm gonna create a little preview because it works a lot quicker. We take that click here, new preview window, and just select any area tend to select something that has a nice amount of detail in here just drag that over then we have a preview right next thing to do we go into processes uh, process and deconvolution and then again deconvolution within here we 
gonna leave everything as default but we're gonna tick the ringing and then select the drop down and here we will select local the ringing and for this we're gonna use our star mask that we created earlier so we select up here in the right hand window select this and select in the drop down your star mask so this is going to protect the stars and we're gonna leave this at 10 iterations and just see what it does if it's a little bit too aggressive we can maybe reduce it to eight or to five um, but we'll see what comes out of it just drag the triangle over to the preview <coughs> And I think that will do. So this sharpened up the image quite nicely. Um, this is quite wide field, so the amount of detail that you're going to get um, is obviously a little bit limited. Also, I think it's only four hours of integration, so it's not, not a huge amount. Um, but I'm happy with that. going to use that. We're going to delete that preview. Right-click on that preview and then the delete. And then we're going to run the deconvolution on the main image. This can take a little while, um, so I'll pause the video and I'll join you again in a few seconds. Right, so this is done. Um, I think that did a very nice job if we zoom in. We have very little, maybe we could have run a few less iterations on maybe eight or seven iterations. Uh, there's just uh, ever so slight black ring around or darker ring around the stars, but it's so wide field that that doesn't really make that much difference. Okay, gonna remove the luminance uh, mask that we created. Right click on the image mask and remove. Because the next thing that we're gonna do is we will take the stars out of the image um, so we can just focus on the nebula. Um, so I'll just declutter here a little bit. Don't need these anymore. We don't need the star mask anymore. Um, there's a few ways you can take the stars out. Um, Starnet 2 is great, really great, works really fast um, and it's free. Um, though again I am going to use uh, something called Star Exterminator, most of you probably have heard of, uh, but it's a paid add-on uh, from RC Astra. I can put a link in below and it's incredible. Um, just uh, removes stars, large, small, everything. Um, sometimes with Starnet 2, there's a few stars left over, um, but nonetheless, it's 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 great anyway. So, But yeah, for this, I use Star Exterminator. This will take a couple of minutes, so I'm going to pause the video again um, and join you back in a couple of minutes. Right, so that took a few minutes to run. takes a little bit longer, but it's really worth using Star Exterminator. Um, now we have two images, one with stars, one without. Uh, the one with stars, I'm just going to rename, right click, identifier, and just call it stars. And we're going to put that aside for now because we don't need that for now. Just going to be working on the starless version. Um, so, first, first thing that I usually do is I go into the histogram, make sure the image is selected. Select the main image, and I can already see the red is a little bit more prominent, so we're going to bring the green slider, select green, uh, bring the roughly in line, centered around, around the red, hit apply, and we do the same with blue, brings it over a little bit. Too much. Okay, and then also deal with the red. Yeah. Just reset this. Bring the red. Yeah. Okay, so that looks 
that up. And then we're going to use RGBK. Just bring that slider here. We can open a preview. Bring it over a little bit. Let's make the background a little bit darker. Uh, but it doesn't need to be perfect for now. We can work on this uh, later on. So the next thing that I am going to do is I'm going to create a false color image. Um, now this was taken with a one-shot color camera um, so and a dual narrowband filter just to isolate the hydrogen alpha and the oxygen 3. Um, if you just want to use this and work on the reds um, absolutely fine you can do that and add the stars back in. Um, maybe skip the next few steps uh, if, if that's the sort of image that you're after. Um, that's that's absolutely fine. Um, but what I'm going to do is I am going to separate the colors, red, green and blue. Um, now Luke and Bill have, or Bill has come up with a fantastic um, script that makes that process very, very easy um, to create uh, these sorts of images. But um, what I will show you is the manual way that I usually do it. But just to show you how powerful these are, and Lucas and Bill have made these publicly available entirely free, um, so really worth checking out. These are these two scripts here. Um, and I can put a link into um, the description below. Um, check out Lucas' channel. Um, but yeah, you probably seen seen his stuff anyway. It's, it's fantastic. So yeah, let's take the SHO one, drag it over, um, and it will uh, create you an image like this. And then you can just work with color masks and do the rest. Uh, or the one that we're going to be working on is the HOO palette. And that brings it more to this. Um, but as I said, I will show you the manual way just in case you're interested uh, how this works. Uh, so what we will do is go into process, channel management, channel extraction, and rename these to red, green, blue. Drag these over. And we're going to create three separate images. Red channel, green channel, blue channel. And close this. Uh, we're going to get rid of the blue channel because we're going to create a new blue channel. You can see the blue channel is very noisy. Uh, we don't really want that anywhere. Um, so we just get rid of that. Um, we are going to work on predominantly these two. Now, we just need to bring them a bit closer in line. As you can see, there's a little bit more nebulosity in here than there is in the red channel. The red channel is very strong on this. So what we'll do is we'll go into the histogram. And I will select the green channel. Move this to the side maybe a little bit just so I can keep an eye on the background here so we don't change too. Introduce too many gradients in here. This is about right. Bring the dark slider over a little bit. I think just a touch more. Bring this over. Okay. Yeah. Happy with that. Close the preview. Maybe take a little look at the red channel. Bring the preview up, just drop the dark over. Okay, that's all done. So we have our red and we have our green. Next thing that we will do is we use some pixel math to combine these and create a new blue channel. Process, pixel math in here. And this is a very simple equation. Um, we have red for the red image. We're going to use 60% of the red, so times 
0 0.6 and then we add the green times 0 0.4 to get to 100%. Then we go into the destination and we create a new image, important. We don't want to replace it, we're going to create a new image and hit apply. So we now have a new blue channel. I'm going to go and identify it and just call this B for blue. So we have red, green, and blue. And then we are going to combine these in LRGB combination. For luminance, we're going to use red. Red, we're going to use red. For green, we are going to use blue. As I said, we will create a false color image. And then for blue, we use green. So the green channel has our combined red and green. And then we're going to add some chrominance noise reduction and apply this globally. This will take a few seconds. And that should spit out a yellowish looking image. Yeah, so this is roughly the same as it was with Bill's script. So I'm pretty happy with this. We can close all these down. We don't need them here. It's just clutter. Move this out the way. Right. Next thing, I want to bring out the blues a little bit more on this. And very simple, we're going to open the curves tool. Again, all of this is in process or processes. Open a preview and select the blue channel. I'm just going to bring the slider up a little bit. Maybe drop that down. And run this again. Now this is introducing a little bit of a purple tinge, uh, which is not necessarily what we need. And there's a very quick way to get rid of that. And it's a script that's already uh, pre-installed on PixInside if you just use the standard uh, modules. So we go into script, utilities, and correct magenta stars. I use this script a lot um, and naming wise a little bit misleading you can just use it also on the nebulosity itself and we're just going to hit execute and that will get rid of the purple and we end up with this sort of teal blue color which is lovely so there we are and then we're going to use some masks. So all these masks I got also free from Luke and Bill and these make life very very easy. Uh, I really do recommend checking out Luke's channel if you haven't done it and download all these um, scripts. They just make the processing so much quicker and easier. Um, for this yellow mask, I mean you can if you go into scripts and utilities you have color masks in here and you can select your different colors. If you do it that way, I would recommend um, if you create a yellow mask, do minimum four layers of blur um, on this um, and just play around with that. But that essentially creates you a similar mask to what I'm about to do. So I have my masks here saved on the side and I'm gonna take the yellow mask because I wanna work on the yellow and turn these more red. I'm um, going to take that and drop that on here. And this will create us basically isolating all the yellows around that uh, we have here. And we're going to blur it a couple of times. 
think this will do. And then we take the mask, just like we did earlier with the luminance mask for deconvolution. Take this, drop it onto the image, and we're going to open the curves tool on here. So now all we're going to be working on is the yellows. We're not going to be touching the blue. Drag the red up and you can see already, you can take this to the extreme. I don't like it, it's too aggressive. Just do a little bit on here. Hit apply. Reset this and add a little bit of saturation. This is the S on here, saturation just to see what the colors are that we're working with. Drag this up. I think that's okay for now. Close this preview and remove the mask by right clicking on the image, mask and remove mask. And then we're gonna do the same with blue. We have a blue mask. drag it onto the image and I will isolate all the blues around. Blur it again a couple of times. Again put this onto the image and the more the more you do this the more of a second nature it becomes. Right. This time we're gonna be working on the blues. Drag this up a little bit. I just want a touch more of the blues to come to come forward. Again, add a little bit saturation. I think this is fine. And then close the preview again and remove that mask. And then we do one more mask we want to add a little bit of the red. So we take the red mask, drag that onto here. Blur it a couple of times. Take that mask, drop it onto the image, curves again. Preview and let's just add a little bit more red, just a touch. And then another cool trick is to play around with the green. Put a couple of pips on here at the bottom, middle, and at the top. And we take the bottom pip and drag it down. Level turn it, you can take this really too far. Just a touch, just to bring out a little bit more rustiness. And then we try and get a little bit more yellow in here, so we drag the top pip up, just a touch. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. We set this. See if we can add a touch of saturation. Yeah, I think that's nice. There we are. We set this, close the preview, remove the mask. We can close all of these. We don't need the masks anymore. And then let's just have another look into the histogram to see what damage we have done. Okay, so we can we can take the red. Let's open the preview so we can keep an eye on it. Drag that over a little bit just to try and bring them in line. Hit apply and then do the same with the green. That looks okay. Actually, 
histogram and let's just do an RGBK and just drag this over just a touch. We don't wanna be clipping any data. And close this. And then there's one more thing that I quite like using and this sort of brings a little bit more of a 3D effect to the image. Um, go into process, all processes and local histogram equalization. Now, if I now go into the preview, this will be very extreme. So we're going to have to tame it down a little bit. And we're just going to do this by dragging the slider maybe around 180, but it just brings a little bit more depth to the image, which is quite good. So I think 180 will do for this. Like I said, if you if you like more of that effect, increase the amount. Um, it's all personal taste really. Um, but I think this is, this is enough so we can close it. And a couple more steps and then we're pretty much done. Um, I would like running another script, uh, which is included. Uh, so scripts, utilities, and dark structure enhance. And we're just gonna leave it the uh, standard settings, default settings, hit okay. This will run through and it'll basically pick out any sort of dark nebulosity within there and make it even darker. Um, so yeah, so this, this, this had a quite a nice, nice effect in here. If I go back and forward, you can see the difference that has made. Right. Um, before we add the stars back in, I always like to zoom in to the image and see if there's any, I think the noise levels are pretty good. So we, you can always run another bit of noise reduction on this or put it into Photoshop and camera raw filter and add a bit of bit of noise reduction if you want. Um, but I think for this tutorial this will do. Um, so we're gonna take our stars and if you're imaging narrowband or depending on what optics you use you might have a little bit of purple tinge to, to your image. And actually what we're going to do is run that same script that we did earlier. Script utilities and correct magenta stars. Just let that run through and it'll clear clear that up quite nicely. Um, for my personal taste, it's a little bit too, too many stars. They're a little bit too overpowering. I want the nebula to be sort of in the foreground and the stars kind of in the back. Um, so what we do is we use morphological transformation, all very fancy names, um, but essentially what that does, it, it kind of turns the lights out a little bit. Um, open that up and um, you don't want to be going too crazy, the full amount, my, my view is way too much. Um, so we take that back and uh, let's set it down to about 65 maybe. 65, 75 is all, all okay. I think it depends on your area that you're imaging in, but you can see that's really sort of nicely turned the lights out a little bit. Um, and now all we're gonna do is rename that image with just an nebula to starless. Just makes pixel math a little bit easier. Go into process, Pixamath, remove that from earlier and put stars plus starless and create a new image. Uh, typo. Stars plus starless, create a new image and apply. And here we have it. I think that looks really cool. Um, so yeah, that's my usual process. Sorry, it took a little bit longer than um, I thought, but um, yeah, if if you're still still here, still listening, um, I hope 
you found it useful. Um, just to give you a little bit of an insight of how I process my images. Um, I tend to follow similar paths all the way. Um, I mean, the only thing that you can do with this image still is crop it in a little bit. Obviously, there'll be stacking artifacts um, within there, so you can you can crop that down. Um, personal choice, rotate it around uh, orientation-wise, but hopefully it's given you a, a little bit of an insight. And yeah, um, if you use the data that I've provided, um, please feel free to do whatever you you want with it um if you post it on social media it'd be nice if you if you give me some credit if you if you don't want to give me credit that's fine as well i'm giving it away for free so do whatever you want with it um yeah thanks for watching and um if if you found it useful do leave a comment in the um below the video it'd be nice to hear where you what you thought and if you have any other opinions of uh, what I could be doing better uh, with my processing, any other techniques, just put them in there um, and I'll happily try them out. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.